are Zach and Amanda from Living Without Walls, and we are finally doing a van tour after two years of having our van completed and converted. This is a 2006 T1 in Mercedes Sprinter, 170 wheelbase. We did get it painted, as you can tell. <laughs> well, we got it painted because it needed to be painted. The paint was like, just like coming off. So we decided we might as well do the color we wanted, which is a Toyota Quicksand. Which we're like fully camo out here. We're like in the middle of Nevada right now. And uh, it's pretty much desert, so desert sand for the wind, fully camoed out right now. What's cool about this van tour is it's not like we just built out the van and we haven't tried it or like gotten used to it or like dialed it in yet. This is after two years of us owning the van and having the van converted and like fine tuning it, so. We've done two like mini remodels in the van, so yeah. there's a lot of stuff that we've tweaked since the first time we built it after having lived in it and like really experiencing how everything works in there and getting it all figured out how it works perfectly for us. And I think we actually have it down now. Yeah, <laughs> she's dialed in now for sure. So we're definitely excited to show you guys what we've changed and how it works for us. Ready when you are. So as you saw in the very first clip of this video, yes, we have a motorcycle with us. This is my 2006 Yamaha XT225 Dual Sport. And I'm so stoked to have this bike because the first time we made a trip out west, I didn't have it and I wanted it so bad. So I'm so stoked to have this. This is our DIY moto hauler. I did not make it, but a guy back home made it. I got it for 70 bucks. It's fully just welded together and it's been awesome. We can both hop on the bike and go explore spots that we park at that we wouldn't normally get to. Like there's all sorts of crazy terrain that we can't take the van on. And when we have the bike with us, there's pretty much nowhere we can't go. Yeah, there's nowhere that we can't go. Is it awesome? It's so awesome, dude. <laughs> So speaking of rough terrain, we had some really small tires on the van. But we just recently upgraded our tire size from 225s to 245s. So this is the biggest tire you can fit on a T1N without making modifications. And this thing is beefy dude these are hand cooked dynapro at2 tires um they are rated really good for the snow which is crucial for us snow and ice so yeah handling all together is better it just grips a lot more so we're really really stoked with this tire all right so this is our foamy surfboard that we brought with us this time it's just two l brackets bolted to our Vantec ladder rack. All right, this is our Vantec ladder. Not a whole lot to say about this ladder other than the fact that it works. It came in a kit and we just bolted it all together. Welcome to our roof. We are, <laughs> we are on the roof and uh, this is our Thule Summit luggage carrier hand me downs for the win yeah thanks to amanda's dad for hooking us up with this guy so as you can tell it's really easy to open so we have three surfboards in this thing we have a fat mini simmons on the bottom and then we have this dual board bag with two short boards in it one being five nine and one being five six yes yeah so we got the whole quiv pretty much, yo. We got the foamy, we got the shorty, so. Wetsuits in there too? No, no wetsuits in here. Oh, they're in the. Super crucial for the surfboard quiver. So this is our ladder rack. It is from Vantech. It is the aluminum one. And 
yeah, it just bolts onto our gutter. And we trimmed it. Yeah, we trimmed it because these things were like up here, you know, because ladders and construction life. Construction. So trimmed it down and it looks way better like that. So that's how the toolies mounted on. Not only that, but our awning, we just bolted in to the side of the ladder rack. This is our AC unit. Last but not least, on the roof, we have our two 100 watt Renogy solar panels. So on a good day, these guys will pull in eight to nine amps. That's like the most usually that I'll see. Um, when it's really overcast like this, you know, anywhere from like two to five. So, you know. So this is our Rhino Rack Sun Seeker awning. It is one of the cheapest awnings that you can pretty much possibly get. So we don't use it that often, but it's there when we need it and haven't had any problems with it. So this is our water like mains inlet. Um, this fills up our 40 gallon water tank. This is our water heater. It's made by Gerard. Gerard. Gerard or something. <laughs> It's propane and this is like the exhaust where the heat comes out of when we're using it. We have our plug-in, 30 amp plug-in for the AC unit. This is a really awkward shot. This is our 30 amp plug-in for our Dometic AC unit. This little crappy looking plug <laughs> is um, for our inverter. So whenever we plug in with this guy, um, we will have endless power to all of our AC power outlets. Um, this also would normally charge our batteries, but I'm actually having a problem with our inverter with that, but we'll get to that whole electrical system a little bit later. Stinky. No, it's not. It is, dude. Smell it. No, this is where our nature's head toilet vents out of, and it's stinky. Oh. So this is our cabin divider. Uh, this is one of the things that we did a major upgrade on since last year's winter trip. Um, last year we just had like a curtain, which I know a lot of people have. Um, it really drove me crazy. It was horrible. It was always bunched up. It was messed up. There was light coming through. So these guys are like $700 online. So I was like, definitely gonna make my own. Um, I think this cost us like 40 bucks and um, it's snapped in at the top so you can like unsnap and like pull it off. It's really easy to take on and off. Um, we also have two zippers that go all the way down here. So how we normally have it, it's just how it is right now with this one unzipped. We can go in and out uh, to the cabin and to the back. It keeps heat or air conditioning in the front from escaping all the way to the back. So it keeps it super comfortable up front really quiet while we're driving. We don't hear anything like rattling in the back. All right, so the part that everyone is always waiting for in a van tour, the actual living quarters. <laughs> there is a lot. I do not know where to start. So I will just start with the door. <laughs> the door. <laughs> so the door. Hang on, hang on. I guess first things first, we have a little doormat down here. We've got the Sanook doormat, which is really nice for wiping your wet or disgusting feet off before you step into the van. <laughs> we have our stickers on it, our sticker collection. Um, right when you walk in right here is our light switch, which also has a dimmer on it, which we're not gonna dim because it looks like crap on camera. <laughs> really crucial part of the van build, honestly, is these hooks, they pop out. They're just from Ikea. My dad actually showed them to us when we were in Ikea, so thanks dad. But yeah, these are perfect because if you have a wetsuit, wet towel, wet snow gear, anything, it can hang right here and drip right down onto the um, floor mat and just go right outside so it doesn't get any of your stuff in here wet. Also, when you're hanging snow gear up here, it's awesome because our S-Bar heater, this heats the entire van and it does an amazing job. Most nights it actually like 
uh, heats us out of here. We ended up having to turn it off halfway through the night. But the heater being right here, it's super drying. So any of your snow gear that's up here, if you leave it here overnight, it will most certainly be bone dry by the morning. So the first thing you see when you walk in is the kitchen. A lot of people put their kitchen over here and like the shower here. But the reason we have our kitchen right here is so that you have all this space when you're cooking to not feel like you're like shoved against the stove or anything like that. It's just nice to have space to move around when you're cooking. And we didn't want it to be in the hallway so that you can be cooking and not have to be disturbed by someone who like wants to walk in or out of the van or when we were building it, we had a dog so we didn't want to be in the dog's way all the time. Yeah, there is a lot to talk about in this little in the, four. <laughs> what's funny is, is that's space. how it works because you don't want to be in the dog's way, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, the best part of the van probably. We have a camp chef oven. So when we bought it, it was like 200 bucks. Um, I think the price has gone up a little bit now, but it's still amazing. So we have two burners. Um, it does come with a cover, but we took it off. And then you have an oven. So right now we, we store some stuff in here while we're moving, but it does have a legit oven, which is amazing. I've made cakes, muffins, cookies, pizzas, lasagna. I'm not gonna tell them what the heck that box was. Oh, that's my tea box that I just acquired from Zach's great aunt. All right, the rest of the countertops. So we've got the butcher block countertops made of apparently the hardest wood in the world to cut. Ipe. Ipe. <laughs> Ipe. Ipe butcher block, which we didn't know we were buying, but it sure is pretty. We've got the sink cut out here, so a little hole. I can just pull this off. And then as far as the sink, we put as deep of a sink as we could in here. It lost us some storage space below it but honestly it's so amazing there is nothing worse than trying to wash dishes in like a six inch deep sink right it's horrible yes so we wanted a deep sink and also just to be able to like if we make breakfast and we want to like get on the move we can just throw our dishes in there throw this top on and we're out over here we just have our faucet it does have a pull out with a spray this is our soap dispenser. So we keep our dish soap in there so it doesn't flop around. This is our Christmas branch. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas branch. <laughs> Look at that pickle. This is our key holder back here. Um, it looks like a little Marshall amp. It's really nice because our keys don't go flying anywhere. They actually lock in there. We have our two cubbies right here. Um, the Black Star mini amps. We didn't measure this at all and they somehow fit absolutely perfectly. So love when that happens. Our toothbrush, vitamins, stuff like that right there. Ikea knife rack. So it's magnetic. It's super, super strong. We have never had a problem with these even really moving. Um, definitely do not fall off. Even on like gnarly Mexico dirt roads, like no problems. We just hung up our spices. So these are like our most used spices. So they are down here, don't take up space in the cabinet. Really easy to get to. Our fruit basket. We do have a AC plug, AC. GFCI. <laughs> GFCI right here. And a little USB charger. Boop. The tile guy. This tile. That <laughs> Everyone somehow thinks it's real and it's like it's so not. like crooked and like, it's totally just stickers guys. It's really cheap. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna do a quick rundown of the cabinets. We don't need to get too much into that. But we do have these little locking guys. So you push the button and then it pops open. We've got the hydraulic cabinet lift. <laughs> so up here, this is just basically toiletries, stuff to keep you not disgusting as much as possible. Down here is just mostly like Flour, pancake mix, cocoa, oatmeal. And then the other cabinet, the top here is all our coffee stuff. So our pour over, coffee grinder. And then this is the rest of our spices that aren't quite as used as much as these. And then, you know, oil, 
all that kind of jar stuff, stuff in jars. This is where we keep our trash can. This is from Ikea. It's perfect size. We just have to empty it like every single day. <laughs> no, it's like every two to three days. This lasts us like two to three days, I would say, in trash. Um, the Ninja Blender, our broom. And then our propane is back here, which you can probably see. And then some of our like bulkier food stuff, potatoes. <laughs> and then our locking things didn't really work here. So we have this. <laughs> and then the giant drawer, giant drawer. This is where pretty much everything is. So Tupperware with like, basically first aid kit, oven lid. This cup has all our utensils in it. We have this little Ikea cutting board. Um, our plates are bamboo. We have metal bowls just to keep from breaking things. Um, we have one pot. We brought a bigger pot last year. We had a um, What's it called? Arctic something. It was like a retractable like pot silicone. thing. Silicone. Yeah, it was silicone and it was awesome, but it blew out after a year of using it. So this time we just have a regular pot. And then our nonstick pan and all our other cooking stuff. We also have an LED that's behind the cabinet. So that's nice when you're cooking to really light up see what you're doing or also if you just don't want all the lights on you just want lights in the kitchen that's really nice okay this is the area that we've changed what three times we've had three different setups in this area first we had a huge bench with the fridge in it then we had a tiny bench that you couldn't even sit on <laughs> And now we're back to what I actually originally drew in our original van plans that we didn't do for some reason, um, which is the dinette. Uh, this works way better than anything else we had. We're able to sit like normal people and like face each other and eat. One of us can sit here while the other one like moves around. You don't have to move the table for someone to get out. It's super nice. So we have the um, lagin. 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 Wagon. The swivel table, uh, which is nice because I can move it over here and use it for extra counter space in the kitchen. Or it can come over here where it normally lives. <laughs> the seat cushions are actually from our couch at home. I resized them to fit in here, so it's kind of like we took our home couch with us. And we each have a bench here with storage. So this is Zach's. I'm scared to open it. Oh, it's nice. Um, and mostly what we keep in here is like camera gear, bulky snow gear. Mine's over here. Normally our backpacks are just kind of thrown down there. It looks like it would be annoying, but honestly it works pretty good for us. Another crucial upgrade this time is that we have a mirror. <laughs> it seems like something that's not necessary, but we didn't really have one last time and we would just walk out and have no idea what we looked like. So we got this mirror cut at Lowe's for like four bucks and then Zach built this sweet frame out of some old fence panels that we had laying around the house. So now we have this nice big mirror. It's awesome because it makes it feel a lot bigger in here. And then the Riley skateboard. <laughs> of course. So this is our dog Riley. Um, this is Lissy and Jagger. They were both um, shop dogs. They were all shop dogs at Ocean Surf Shop where I work at home in North Carolina. And they surprised us with this deck with Riley on it, which just like means everything to us. So it hangs right here. And then the AC unit. <laughs> Ah, this is um, the underside of the Dometic Penguin 2. Um, not really much to say about it. It sticks out a little bit, but I'm 5'8 and I can stand up. My hat's touching, but my head's not. Um, I think Zach has to like duck just a little bit. 
Woo! All right, guys, we're taking a quick lunch break. The van tour has been heavy so far, so we will catch you guys here in just a couple minutes. So the reason we did do a built-in permanent shower, uh, there's a couple reasons. The main reason is just that we knew we were going to be spending the winter in like really cold areas and we didn't know if we'd have access to a gym to take a shower. Um, so we just decided to allot the space and have a shower so that we don't ever really have to worry about it. We've got our hooks here for towels and stuff, our light switches up here. And then I don't remember who makes this sliding door, but it's kind of expensive, but I would say it's worth it for sure because I don't know what other alternative would work this good to be able to have a door. In the shower, we have just a shower pan. Um, so for the sides, Zach just put up poly wall, which is just waterproof. You see it a lot in like hospitals and stuff like that. And then he caulked all the edges. So this whole room is completely waterproof. We've got the custom cedar floor pan thing so that you're not ever having to step in water. Cause sometimes water can kind of like, it can get wet down there if you take a shower, but the water just goes through the wood, which is nice. So you don't ever have to step in nasty water. So our shower head, instead of the traditional shower head that has that weird like locking mechanism this has like a little hook on it so it just hooks in it doesn't ever fall off if we're driving down any kind of crazy road it just stays in there it's also super close to the wall and super low profile another crucial thing is having the pause button last but not least the nature's head toilet I guess the reason we did a composting toilet is we didn't want to have to deal with having like a black water tank or any of that weird stuff. I don't know. It's just kind of weird. It's really easy to just empty it into a trash bag and put it in the trash. All right. So under the bed, we have our fridge. We have an isotherm refrigerator. We didn't want to do like the Dometic where it feels like you're living out of a cooler all the time. We wanted to feel like you had an actual like normal fridge like in your house. Also, it does have this little bitty freezer. I guess it could be nice to have a bit of a bigger fridge, but it actually works pretty well for us. Above the fridge, um, this is our hot water heater controller. So pretty much you just turn it on. And then when you turn the water on, you can see that it starts heating it up and you can control the temperature and everything. This is our power for our inverter, which currently it is on because we are charging this battery right here. <laughs> in that plug and then this controls our water pump. Moving back to the bedroom. Um, when we built the bed frame, it's it's two by fours, right? So it's two by fours and there's like a little gap. So you've got about a four inch little space in there. So we decided to put two little secret cubbies so we could store stuff, just a little extra storage. So under the bed, you just lift it up. So this cubby has actually our laundry, our dirty laundry bag. So it just stays tucked away in here. This is also where we store like clean towels that we haven't used yet. <laughs> Cause they're clean. <laughs> Which is kind of a pain in the butt to get to, but it's all kinds of stuff that we don't use very often. Bedroom? Bedroom. Last year we had the cheapest bed you can buy on Amazon and it sucked. <laughs> Do not recommend. So this year we have upgraded to the Tufted Needle Nod. Um, it was like $350 and it so far has been definitely worth the extra money for an upgrade. It's way better. So from the frame in the shower, from framing out the shower, we had you saw the cubby in the shower. So we have another cubby on this side uh, for our laptop and iPad. It's kind of hidden in here, which is nice. It's not 
right out in the open where you would see it right away. We have our controller for our Max Air fan. The Max Air fan is right here above our heads. Last year we battled with this thing. <laughs> it was like in the door, it would like fall out every time we opened the door, it was a pain in the butt. So this year we just put some little strappy guys. What are these called? Like clips? Buckles. We put these Can't little- Can't we have shoes on the bed right now? We have these little buckles that hold my yoga mat. So it's super easy to get down and it stays out of the way. Hanging out along the wall here, <laughs> we have guitar, ukulele, projector, skate helmets. So we each have a closet, um, a little overhead cabinet here. This one is mine. And yeah, that's pretty much all my clothes, socks, and like underwear, stuff like that. I don't know, we don't have a whole lot. And then Zach's is the same thing. Um, what else? Oh, my shelf. Oh, you can also see we have more window covers back here on these back windows. We pretty much never ever take those off. This is, are you good? Yep. This is another thing we added um, this summer to the van. So a lot of this stuff I would just like shove in between the crack of the bed and the wall last year. So I asked Zach to build me this shelf and it came out perfect. Um, so, you know, my diffuser is up here, which is really great for when we're going to sleep because it falls down like right over our heads and it's like amazing. Oh, and one more thing back here. I have a little. We are now moving on to the garage. The garage is one of my favorite parts of the van. So I'm gonna show you guys the garage. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should move him. What do you think? No, he's great. <laughs> First thing you might notice is this trusty snow shovel that that's covered in dirt. Expands. This daddy is really good for getting snow off the roof. Scratch. <laughs> All right, so. This shelf right here is home to our 40 gallon water tank. It is back in there. Um, our Girard water heater. Girard. Girard. As well as our hose that we fill up with. The hose that we spray off with in the summer. And a lot of the plumbing and gas lines for the propane and water system. So we have a valve here to hook a hose up to so we can take an outdoor shower. That's super sick. Um, we can also just like, I can wash the motorcycle with it. All that good stuff. Underneath that, one of my skateboards. Um, all of our skateboards can fit under there. Tripod back in there. There's extra sheets here. There's all sorts of crap in here. These are our snow chains. They kind of chill right here. I recently added three LED strips in here with a light switch which you can't see right now because it's super bright already. You can open it up and it can be pitch black dark outside and you can see everything in the garage. That's the best upgrade that we've done recently. Um, this is my toolbox. I've got a bungee on the front of it to hold the drawer shut. So yeah, I've got everything I need in this toolbox to fix wiring, to do roadside repairs. I've changed water pumps. I've changed our harmonic balancer. I've done all sorts of stuff on the road with the van. Back up in here, <laughs> we have our Honda generator. It's a 2200 watt generator and it can run our AC. Also got a gas can back there, a five gallon gas can. 10 gallon Tupperware container full of peat moss for our compost toilet. We have this thing. <laughs> it has like all sorts of crap in it, dude. It's got mothballs, freaking 
a shaver so when Amanda like is feeling it she can give me haircuts. When I'm feeling it, when yeah. you're feeling it. We got like AeroPress coffee maker, dude. Toilet deodorizer stuff from Wallex. Show them that. This stuff is awesome. Um, we will fill up our pee tank and our toilet with this stuff. It's like just a packet, like a Tide Pod kind of, and you just put it in there, fill it up with water. It turns like orange or green or whatever color, and it like eats away all the like pee buildup in the pee tank. So this stuff is awesome. Oil, coolant. So there's, you know, boots up there. Two snowboards on top of each other. And then way in the back, way back there you guys can't even see in the depths of the garage like it goes I mean, imagine deep. a queen size bed depth yeah you know. um there is a oil drain pan i think it's eight quarts i'm pretty sure so i can change the oil in the van and on my motorcycle when we're on the road so i also recently added these shelves they are amazing um we have a backup propane setup with like a single burner. So if we run out of propane in the kitchen, we can still cook and stuff. We have like steaks for the awning. We've got Inu hammock, of course, as well as this like knife, dude. <laughs> and then yeah, drill, duct tape, funnel, um, drill charger, all that good stuff. All right, so for the electrical. I have these things that slide out so I can get to everything. We have a ginormous 2000 watt. It's on. It's, it's on, yeah. <laughs> 2000 watt, Renogy, pure sine wage. <laughs> Pure sine wave inverter slash battery charger. We have two 200 amp hour AGM. <laughs> um, Woo! Um, AGM lead acid batteries. Uh, yeah, they're uh, they're 12 volt, 200 amp hour batteries, and they're really heavy. They weigh 150 pounds a piece. We have our Renogy Adventure solar charge controller. Um, that thing's been great. Uh, we have like, you know, breakers. <laughs> we have breakers for the AC and breakers for the GFCI outlet. And yeah, the DC fuse panel is back there. There's all sorts of switches and fuses and all sorts of crap in there. Um, <laughs> we also have a battery isolator to charge from the alternator when we're driving it is 90 amps it's been awesome it's on all the time our alternator is on all the time so i don't know how it hasn't fried yet but <gasps> it is crushing it and it keeps our batteries charged all the time so yeah i had to run a big old cable back from the front back here for that and um so yeah i uh, built a shelf over the wheel well for the batteries as well as the water tank that way the weight is directly over the axle that helps with you know all this when driving a lot weeble wobbles weeble wobbles <laughs> so yeah this flooring is like like feels like basketball material that's the best way to describe it it's like rubber it really is. like smells like a basketball um through this like aluminum 90 guy on here oh should we tell them about our insulation Oh yeah, yeah, the whole van is insulated with um, inch thick XPS, Pink Panther foam board. Pink Panther. A bunch of great stuff, foam spray. We also have rattle trap. Yeah, we also, the first thing we did with the van was stick rattle trap everywhere and that really helps with like the whole file cabinet, like boom, boom effect. All right, everybody. So this is our van. This van has worked fantastic for us. <laughs> and first of all, if you've ever completed a van build yourself, I just wanna say congratulations because it is hard work. It is very challenging, especially if you don't know what you're doing. So I'm definitely very proud of myself and proud of Amanda for 
creating the things that we have for the van. It's taught us so much and really made us appreciate so many things in life that you never really think about in your day to day. This van has given us the opportunity to be able to go snowboard for winters at a time, to come see crazy spots in Nevada, to see the Grand Canyon, to see family we wouldn't normally get to see. To go to Mexico. Oh my gosh, like, <laughs> it has opened up and given us so much, so. So we also just want to say thank you to Nate Murphy for having us on his YouTube channel. Super stoked to be here. Be sure to subscribe to Nate Murphy. Give this video a thumbs up. And then check out our channel, which is Living Without Walls. We post vlogs at least every week, if not more than once a week sometimes. So yeah, lots of skating, snowboarding, surfing, random stuff. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna go check out this freaking sand dune. You. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that content. Um, if you hadn't noticed, we do have an ebook that we sell, uh, and the link is just in the description. Uh, it contains 160 pages crammed full of practical advice, walkthrough information, electronic schematics, and part lists, which will make your job a lot easier for doing a van conversion and it will save you time and money. Also, we've created special videos for the ebook which enable you to see walkthroughs for how to do loads of things in the van conversion. So that's for water systems, for electrics, for how to do simple woodwork joints that anyone can do. And I really believe that anyone, regardless of their experience, can make a half decent van conversion. Thanks for watching, we really appreciate you watching our content and um, we put a lot of effort to make it interesting, informative and find those cool projects to feature on our channel. Consider subscribing, leave a comment and we'll see you next week.